Hey gang, uh, welcome back to the big board. I am playing just a little bit of uh, Breaking the Chains. We're only on the first game turn, and we're on the second, I think the second general cycle inside the second game turn, first game turn. And what that means is uh, these game turns are a little unusual. They're not the typical uh, style of game turn you might imagine, and uh, e even different from the Fleet series. Uh, I guess in modern naval uh, times this is uh, something more akin or trying to be more uh, more representative of the the operational tempo of of how actions may occur and given that this involves uh, uh, you know land attack cruise missile strikes and black ops and naval and ground and air. There's obviously a lot of different uh, speeds that things are moving at and a lot of different uh, uh, different tempos that are, can be achieved with different uh, force mixes. So aircraft uh, here, for example, well, here's a dead one. Let's pull a dead guy. So you know, these aircraft in a turn will have the potential to have combat six times, whereas, uh, assuming they recover, whereas, and ships may also have the same uh, ability, but uh, firing cruise missiles, you may only get to do that once in a game, let alone uh, a turn. And black ops have to be planned, a uh, turn in advance, and all that sort of fun stuff. So there's a lot, a lot of different things going on. And in, in a given turn, you'll have uh, a black ops phase, you'll have your uh, political phase, which is not in this particular scenario, which is a, a series of random events that can occur. Uh, moving forces in and out of the, the region and via transit uh, uh, functions. And then there's this concept of the general quarters phase, which, you know, a little naval term there, but basically what we're going through is 10 cycles, oh, sorry, 10 cycles, six cycles of uh, air, naval, and air naval engagements with a little bit of administration tacked on the back of it. And at first glance, six cycles, you're like, wow, that sounds like an incredible pain in the ass. But uh, it's actually not that big a deal. Because uh, the way I look at it is I go, oh, six cycles, uh, 10 turns, that's 60 cycles, that's 60 sets of actions I've got to do for each side. And if I'm rolling dice three or four times, six times 60, well, now we're, we're up there on the wristage, right? However, all that said, when you look at it, it's actually very straightforward. You've got a set number of forces on the board, and each side is uh, really aiming to uh, destroy at a distance. You know, it's the whole the whole concept of over the horizon uh, combat, and that's pretty ably represented here. So everything really uh, boils down to a very straightforward. Uh, die roll, and then a me which is measured against the defensive value which can be either a white color or a green color uh, on uh, a given counter. So a force, a unit, an aircraft, for example, on the back here will have two or three different capabilities, sometimes four capabilities. They'll have anti-aircraft, air-to-air, sorry, they'll have air-to-air -air combat, uh, anti-ship combat, and uh, anti-ground or uh, ground attack combat values. And so you will uh, Take that number and add it, that num one of those numbers and add it to 2d6, and that is going to be your total combat attack value. And then you will roll to defend. And the only trick is that uh, you want to keep uh, your units with green values here. I don't know why my new phone is uh, doing all this auto focusing, but it's really annoying. Yeah, thanks for that, dude. Anyway, that's a green 11, if you can believe me. They're important because you can, if you're stacked with that unit, you can take that unit's anti-missile uh, defense number and use it uh, for any ship that happens to be in that hex that's attacked. Very powerful and valuable uh, uh, defensive mechanism. So. You uh, do all your fighting, and it goes in a uh, it's kind of an I go you go basis after uh, initiative, uh, and then uh, once you're all done in a given cycle, if there are units that have not conducted an action, they could then 
you would then kind of carry on in a in a second round within that cycle. But this is a small scenario and everyone basically is shooting and firing and then you wrap up and do the admin and recover aircraft uh, from uh, their uh, usage. And then uh, that would allow them to then conduct combat in the next cycle. So we, for instance, we've got a roll for that guy. I need to roll an eight, I roll an 11. And so he will recover. So there's an, let's see that says uh, die roll greater than eight. So we'll recover our uh, F-35s uh, here on the Nimitz so that they can conduct strikes. Uh, they'll also be able to cover, uh, do cap coverage as well on that hex. It's important uh, when you're playing this game to have a little bit of thought about the flight paths you're going to take and the uh, and where you will have opportunities to uh, interdict uh, potential attacks. So I've been using this guy here who we need to roll for. He rolls an 11 as well. That's pretty good. Uh, he, uh, last turn, uh, conducted, or this turn, conducted a strike against... Uh, some forces here and just blew them out of the water. It was a little uh, little frigate, this little guy. And uh, so next turn, he will focus on tr uh, perhaps trying to do one, two, three, four, five. Yes, trying doing trying to do intercepts from the two CVs here. And we'll keep going. We'll roll for those guys. Seven, they didn't make it, and eight, they did. So these guys recover. And so uh, next turn, now we'll have just one CV attacking one CV, so it'll be a bit more of a fair fight. Uh, and we'll have to trace our flight paths in. So anyway, you've got uh, anti-air fire, you have uh, anti-missile defense, and you'll have cap over a given unit, over a CV particularly, typically. Um, and they are the three forms of uh, inter-unit inter combat you're going to see unless you're in each other's hex and then you'll do uh you can do gun guns firing at each other and uh you know they're on ship uh uh you know uh, weapons and things like that It'll be, otherwise it's all ranged combat so this these two these two ships could fight each other well actually they can shoot no they can't these guys could shoot if they were within three hexes here if he was here he has a range of three Chinese have a greater range than the Americans uh, do because of these uh, special missiles that they uh, have. I forget what they're called. It's got a big Russian name for it. Uh, Sover Sovereignty. 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 Yeah, class uh, ships. These destroyers have pretty long-range missiles that are effective and deadly. Uh, combat factor of three, which is the same as uh, these guys. Anyway, getting off, ta off task. So I'm uh, quite enjoying it. It is, uh, this is just a cute little introductory scenar scenario. And I thought given that there are a lot of things that at play here, I would do an introductory scenario. Typically I will just jump straight into the campaign. But I think this, you know, you've got to trace your flight paths because they're important. If I chose uh, the last turn, if I had chosen to fly over this hex, then I would have subjected myself to uh, anti-aircraft fire. And uh, we don't want to do that. So you mark your, I mark the, 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 the where I'm traveling to on the board. And uh, I can also uh, conduct my own missions. So this turn, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna head out and try and knock out another CV. Uh, we killed the aircraft on this guy. So he's basically non-functional. And just because I'm trying to be a little uh, historical, I'm keeping that uh, those uh, defensive units there, those uh, battleships there with them, destroyers there, to protect it. Otherwise, I would have uh, uh, you know sailed in on here and uh, just tried to blow out this hex. So, anyway, good stuff. This is from uh, Compass Games. It's called Breaking the Chains. Too early to say whether it's awesome, good, or bad. It's interesting at the moment, and I certainly do like the map and the artwork. Uh, I, I find that you know, these aircraft are so similar that having really detailed drawings of each particular aircraft is not gonna add a lot of value since the Chinese basically copied most of the American, uh, stole most of the American plans anyway. So these kind of uh, uh, I iconic, uh, icon-styled uh, graphics work well for me. The counters are not cluttered at all. It's got uh, various elements on here that are important. 
uh, stealth ratings and things like that. That stealth ratings can determine who goes in what order uh, when we when we uh, get into combat. Lots of little things I did not mention uh, as we as you play this game. My only, if I'm going to pick uh, uh, nitpick with this game, would be the rules are uh, uh, seem to be written out in a logical manner. But when you, when you actually sit down to play it, you find yourself flipping backwards and forwards. It, it's written in turn sequence of play order but the way the rules are laid out within that are not the necessarily the order that things occur in uh, in the game i do like the fact that the rule book opens up with an example of play and you read that example of play and you go oh, wow this looks really straightforward as you get into it there's a little bit more to it and it's a little bit more nuanced and uh, takes a little bit more work but uh, so far i'm enjoying it and i'll uh, leave the ramble at that